Nature and New Orleanians wrestle long and hard for control of these 1,500 acres. Nature had a good toehold over the place. Some of these oaks were breathing when Europe was barely out of the Middle Ages. So nature put up a great fight. Twice this place was a plantation, once before a park. Countless times a cattle pasture. And each time, nature reclaimed large chunks of it. And even today, there's enough of the wildly primitive around to let us see this place as the Indians saw it when they used it for a trail on the way to the lake. Exactly 100 years ago, nature in New Orleans reached a sort of compromise, and the compromise came to be called City Park. Man came with his palms and his statues. From the gay 90s to the grim 30s they came and left symbols of work in a place of play. But maybe because nature had fought so long and well, New Orleanians didn't demand total surrender. There's much that's man-made or artificial here. But it all seems done as a guest to the surroundings. And many of the man-made things harken back to the primitive. So we have our compromise. It's not a wilderness park. It's not an amusement park. It's both, and we've loved it for a hundred years. People walk better in the park than anywhere else. And if you don't care to walk, you can fly. When a man can handcuff his imagination to his hands, he can shape his own myths and ride through the outside world at a speed and on a mount of his own choosing. Like all good parks, city parks also about the regenerative process. As nature sees it, beauty. And as we see it, absurdity. So we start our second century of coexistence with nature at City Park. I think that's why ducks always seem so right for this place. They're part of nature, but they're like us too. Conformists get quarrelsome. handsome, yet silly. But sometime, just wanting to be alone, to get in touch with ourselves. And ponder the wonderful beauty of this place.